the last lecture we uh, on based on the gas tungsten inert gas uh, welding process, uh, we have seen that uh, how the heat is generated uh, during the uh, welding by this process and uh, what are the different types of the electrodes, what are the various possible gases which uh, can be used for protecting the weld pool from the atmospheric contamination. And also we have seen that what are the factors that affect the flow rate uh, required for uh, uh, optimum uh, uh, shielding by uh, the inert gases or uh, other inactive gases which can be used for this purpose. So, in this uh, presentation we will uh, mainly focusing on that if, uh, if there are two gases like argon and helium available for, uh, uh, for the use to protect uh, uh, the weld pool from the atmospheric contamination then how can we compare and which gases, which gas should be selected for this purpose. Uh, apart from this, we will also see that what are the various methods through which arc can be initiated uh, for the welding purpose. There are th three main methods uh, which are uh, based on the carbon block and the use of the pilot arc and high frequency unit. These are the three methods about which we will be talking in detail. Then there is one variant of the gas tungsten arc, weld, arc welding process uh, in which the current is pulsed between the low and the high levels uh, so that very controlled heat input can be provided to the base metal during the welding and this process is specifically used for uh, uh, the low heat uh, uh, for the applications where low heat input is desired. Uh, then there is another variant of the GTAW process that is the hot wire GTAW process. In this process uh, basically filler metal is heated before feeding into the arc zone so that uh, the melting rate can be increased and uh, the heat input to the base metal can be reduced for uh, achieving the same welding speed. So, this process particularly helps in getting the higher welding speed. So, uh, starting with the factors that affect the flow rate and uh, the relative effectiveness uh, of the shielding gases like uh, argon and the helium. If we see that uh, the helium is very light, uh, then the uh, air and uh, uh, the carbon and dioxide and uh, uh, your argon. So, uh, helium being uh, significantly lighter uh, than the air, therefore it tends to rise immediately in turbulent, turbulent manner uh, away from the weld pool uh, as soon as it comes out uh, during the welding. So, uh, the protection by uh, any shielding gas can be provided only if uh, the, the cover uh, by the shielding gas is formed around the arc and around the weld pool. If the gases tend to come up off the weld pool then this uh, the effectiveness of the shielding uh, is reduced and therefore, uh, it is necessary that whatever gas is being provided it should form form blanket around the weld pool and the arc so that required protection to the weld pool can be uh, provided. But since the helium is lighter than the air therefore, it tends to come immediately after coming out from the nozzle and it, it tends to move up and uh, therefore, uh, uh, it uh, reduces the effectiveness of the shielding and uh, thus uh, uh, shielding effect is reduced if the flow rate is uh, not enough. So, to under the such conditions when the helium is trying to move up as soon as it is coming out of the nozzle, uh, then uh, to have the desired shielding effect it is necessary that the flow rate uh, of the shielding gas like helium is high enough and therefore, for effective shielding the flow rate of the helium uh, must be about 2 to 3 times greater than the argon because here argon is heavier uh, much heavier than the helium. So, when it comes out of the nozzle it immediately tends to form a, a complete blanket around the weld pool to protect it uh, from the atmospheric contamination and that is why argon requires lower flow rates than the helium and this is the approximately range of the flow rate desired for helium it is about 12 to 22 liter per minute while that in case of uh, argon it is about uh, 5 to uh, 12 liter per minute. So, the factors that uh, dictate uh, the flow rate uh, to be used for effective uh, shielding purpose these factors are the size of the weld pool. Bigger is the size of the pool large will be the amount of uh, the flow uh, gas that should be allowed to flow from the nozzle so that it can form perfect blanket around the weld pool and the gap between the nozzle and the electrode. If the gap between the electrode and the uh, nozzle uh, 
uh, is big, then it will require higher flow rate to maintain the perfect uh, firm jet around the arc and around the weld pool. If this gap is uh, small, then the lower flow rate will be uh, required. However, sometimes uh, the too small gap between the electrode and nozzle can lead to the excessive turbulence, which can reduce the protection to the weld pool and the distance between the nozzle and the work piece. Greater is the distance between the nozzle and work piece, higher will be the flow rate required for getting the desired shielding uh, of the weld pool. So, the, uh, these are the factors that affect uh, the flow rate uh, 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 desired for optimum shielding of the weld pool uh, and these are the factors apart from uh, the type of the shielding gas being used because in general we require higher uh, flow rate of the helium gas than the argon. And uh, in addition to above factors, the ambient air movement around the arc also affects the flow rate desired for effective shielding. Higher is the flow rate, greater will be the turbulence and uh, the disturbance to the shielding effect being offered by the shielding gases, then the higher will be the flow rate required to maintain the proper shielding. So, whenever the ambient air movement is more than the 8 to 10 kilometer per hour, then the flow rate, higher flow rate of the shielding gases will be required to maintain the desired shielding effect. So, the flow rate should be high enough to have the perfect jet around the arc and the weld pool under the welding conditions given. These welding conditions are like the given electrode and nozzle, the given gas and uh, uh, the distance between the electrode and the work piece and the ambient conditions when where welding is being done. If the flow rate of the shielding gas is less than the optimum, then it will require insufficient cover around the weld pool and this will lead to the lot of, lot of uh, um, uh, atmospheric contamination by uh, of the, um, uh, the weld pool. So, the weld pool can be significantly adversely affected by the gases present in the atmosphere like oxygen and in the nitrogen. And if the flow rate uh, of the shielding gas is higher than the optimum, then it can lead to the poor arc stability and uh, the increased uh, atmospheric contamination due to the suction effect. So, the too high flow rate and the too low flow rates both are not uh, favorable as far as the effective protection of the weld pool is concerned. And uh, if we see uh, the helium and the argon, both gases can be effectively used for protecting the weld pool from the atmospheric contamination, but sometimes it has been observed that addition of uh, the some gases like uh, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen in the argon helps to get uh, the better welding characteristics, especially in terms of uh, the higher arc voltage which in turn helps to generate uh, the more heat and uh, helps to develop uh, the higher temperature in the arc. And so, in the addition of the gases like hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen in the argon in a small quantity helps to increase the arc voltage during the welding, which in turn helps to um, increase the penetration, weld penetration and the welding speed. And therefore, uh, the helium uh, is sometime intentionally added with the argon and the argon and helium mixtures are commonly used to take the advantages offered by both the gases individually. Helium is good in some of the aspects while ar uh, argon is good in some other aspects. So, for example, when a mixture of argon and helium is used, it offers the advantages of the both uh, and these advantages includes like helium offers the advantage of the good thermal conductivity and the higher arc temperature and this happens because of uh, high arc temperature is obtained because of uh, the higher arc voltage which is developed during the welding and um, the high thermal conductivity helps to have uh, the higher arc efficiency. So, the advantage of the helium is that uh, it, uh, it uh, whatever heat is generated during the welding in the arc region that is effectively transferred to the base metal for the fusion purpose and uh, uh, the for the higher temperature is also generated. So, both these things help in welding and the high thermal conductivity metals and uh, the metals of uh, higher uh, heavier sections and uh, therefore, helium is preferred uh, for those purposes. So, when helium is added with the argon, it helps to increase its thermal conductivity of the mixture and also helps in generating the higher temperature in the arc region. And 
when the argon is used means argon also offers the advantage like the better arc initiation and the arc stability. So, when mixture of both helium and argon is used it that uh, mixture helps to have the uh, positive points related with the both the gases like helium and the argon and it is common to have uh, the mixtures uh, of uh, the argon and helium where helium can vary up to the 25 percent to take the advantage of uh, helium. This uh, diagram further shows the addition of uh, effect of oxygen addition in the argon. So, when uh, if we see here uh, when the oxygen is uh, added with the argon we get the higher temperature in the arc zone and similarly when um, oxygen is added the plasma velocity is found to be higher with the uh, argon and uh, uh, oxygen mixture as compared to the pure argon. So, addition of the oxygen in the argon also helps in increasing the temperature and the velocity of plasma which helps in increasing um, the heat being generated and the temperature in the arc, arc zone and uh, the, these things help in uh, further getting the higher welding speed with the higher penetration during the uh, welding. So, if we compare the argon and uh, the helium in respect of the various desired properties then for the general purpose weld quality argon is preferred, but uh, uh, it is uh, at the same time it is very cost effective also as compared to the helium, but when the very high quality welds are, pro, uh, are required or to be developed for the critical applications then helium is invariably used. So, if you compare the argon uh, then it offers the many advantages over the helium. For example, it offers the easy arc initiation, it is cost effective and uh, easily available and uh, the good cleaning action is uh, provided by the argon when um, AC and the DCEP is used especially when we are welding aluminum and the magnesium and further it offers the shallow penetration which is uh, required in case of the thin sheet welding of the aluminum and magnesium because the deeper penetration offered by the helium can lead to the melt through kind of situations. So, it is favorable uh, under the conditions when shallow penetration is, is desired for the welding purpose. So, there are many situations where argon offers many advantages over the helium. Now, we will see that if the tungsten electrode tungsten inert gas welding process is to be used then we need to strike the arc first and then its maintenance uh, help in general will help in generating the heat uh, uniformly and consistently for melting the fang surfaces of the base material to develop the weld joint. So, to initiate the arc uh, here with the TIG process we use slightly different methods than the uh, sealed metal arc welding process about which we have uh, discussed uh, in the previous lectures. So, the, the TIG arc can be uh, ignited by the three methods, uh, one is the touch start where carbon block is used uh, as a scrap material and the second is the high frequency unit where a pulse of the high voltage of the order of 3000 to the 5000 volt is supplied uh, at very high frequency. So, that uh, the arc is ignited and the third is the low current pilot arc is uh, ignited first and thereafter uh, the normal welding current is uh, supplied. So, these are the three common methods which are used for uh, initiating the arc uh, in the tungsten inert gas welding process. In the case of the carbon block method the first of all uh, the electrode is brought in contact uh, of the carbon block and then it is drawn apart. Once the it is drawn apart uh, it uh, develops the heat and uh, um, uh, the temperature uh, is increased of the electrode tip and uh, thereafter it helps in, in initiating the arc easily at some other place. So, once the electrode is brought in contact with the uh, carbon block it is drawn away from the uh, block and this helps to maintain the arc for a short while. So, that the heat generated helps to facilitate the electron emission and once the electrons are emitted arc can be ignited easily at the spot where it is desired. So, this method is not a very is not full proof or we can say it suffers from the uh, the problem of the carbon pickup 
uh, and the electrode contamination because when we touch uh, the tungsten electrode to the carbon block to complete the circle and to have uh, the arc for a movement the heat generated uh, by the arc leads to the little bit uh, uh, melting of the electrode tip this uh, causes the picking up of the carbon uh, from the block to the electrode tip and uh, this picking up of the carbon from the uh, block to the electrode tip leads to the electrode contamination by formation of the tungsten carbide. And once the car tungsten carbide is formed at the tip of the electrode, then uh, it uh, leads to have uh, the many undesirable effects uh, and these undesirable effects uh, uh, will be changing the geometry of the electrode tip and the change in geometry of the electrode tip uh, causes the many undesirable effects like the formation of the tungsten carbide leads to have the increase in size of the electrode tip and uh, this in turn causes the wandering of the arc because electrode tip is contaminated and electrons are not easily uh, released. So, under these conditions uh, the electrode uh, arc tends to wander here and there at the electrode tip and uh, further it reduces the life of uh, the electrode due to the continuous wear and tear uh, of this electrode tip due to the formation of the WC at the high temperature. So, this is not a, a very favorable method especially from the electrode life uh, uh, point of view, but uh, uh, it, it can be used for the crude purposes when not very uh, uh, well so for not uh, for very critical applications are to be developed, but it uh, offers the very low uh, the life of uh, the electrode. The high frequency unit is the another way where, uh, uh, which is uh, used for initiating the arc. In this process a pulse of the high voltage is supplied at high frequency, so that the by field emission uh, arc is initiated and then it is taken off uh, from the welding circuit and normal welding current is, uh, uh, is supplied. So, first uh, a uh, voltage a uh, pulse uh, pulses of uh, uh, the high voltage at very high frequency are provided between the electrode tip and the workpiece so that uh, high potential difference is established between them and by the field emission electrons are released uh, from the uh, electrode and this leads to have the presence of the charged particle in the arc gap in the gap between the electrode and workpiece and the presence of the charged particle in the gap leads to have the initiation of the arc so once the arc is uh, initiated then this uh, uh, high then the pulses of uh, the high voltage uh, at high pre, uh, frequency are taken off from the welding circuit so high frequency uh, unit is uh, brought in uh, to use only for initiation of the arc once the arc is initiated then it is taken off from the welding circuit and normal welding current supply is provided for uh, uh, establishing the arc which will generate the heat uh, required for melting the fing surfaces for developing the weld joint. And uh, this, uh, uh, this method offers the many advantages because there is no contact between the uh, electrode and the carbon block or the work piece. So, the arc initiation uh, method is very clean and it is very efficient in starting the arc and uh, in turn it offers the longer life of the electrode. The low uh, current uh, uh, pilot arc is the another approach where first uh, the low current is supplied while, uh, while the contact is made with the base material for initiating the arc. Once the arc is initiated using the low current the main power supply is brought into the pictures to have the required amount of the heat. So, the low current pilot arc is powered by an auxiliary power source which will be delivering very small current to uh, to initiate the arc using the low current. So, the pilot arc can be established using either a scratch technique or the high frequency unit. This method is very reliable and very efficient and it is commonly used with the direct current. So, the uh, uh, here the basic thing is that when we uh, whether we are using HF unit or the touch start method very low current is supplied uh, in the beginning. So, that uh, whatever arc is generated at the con at the time of contact uh, and uh, uh, during the initiation that is of the very low heat because of the low current. And once the pilot arc is established the main current supply is brought into the picture. So, here 
if you see this schematic diagram uh, in the in case of the arc initiation by the pilot arc uh, the the uh, high frequency um, uh, pulses of the high voltage at high frequency uh, and the low current helps to establish the arc between the tungsten electrode and the nozzle. Once this is established, the normal current uh, is supplied to have the welding arc between the base material and the electrode. So, the, the one typical auxiliary service is uh, auxiliary power source is used to supply um, this low current uh, uh, for uh, having um, the arc initiation in the beginning. And uh, advantage of this uh, is that uh, uh, the, the low current arc helps to uh, reduce the damage, thermal damage uh, caused to the um, tungsten electrode and which in turn uh, helps to increase the life of the electrode. Uh, then another variant of the pulse uh, tungsten inert gas welding process is one where the current is pulsed between, current is varied between the low level to the high level. So, this kind of uh, the process where current is varied continuously as a function of time during the welding uh, is called the pulse welding. The pulse uh, TIG is a variant of the tungsten inert gas welding process in which welding current is varied continuously between a high level and a low level. So, the high level current is termed as the peak current and this current is mainly used for the melting purpose. So, the level of the high current is decided on the basis of the heat that is to be generated for melting the fin surfaces, while the low current is called base current and it is uh, its main function is to have just the welding arc with very low heat at the so that uh, during this low heat period the solidification of the weld pool can take place. So, basically if you see in this diagram this uh, uh, the welding current uh, is allowed to uh, pulse, uh, uh, pulse uh, or vary between uh, the high level and the low level. If you see here we have one uh, time scale then uh, the welding current is allowed to vary between the low level and the high level. So, it can vary in this form there are various waveforms uh, which exist depending upon the way by which current varies during this process. So, this is the time and this indicates the current in ampere. So, the variation uh, between the high level current this is also called peak current and uh, the low level of current that is this Uh, this is called base current or background current. So, obviously, uh, the uh, peak current is uh, designated as I p and uh, the base current is designated as I b. Now, we will see that uh, how the current varies in the pulse TIG arc welding process. So, for this purpose if you see that this uh, y axis shows the variation in current and the x axis shows the time. So, during the welding as the time changes uh, the, there will be the variation in current, this is welding current amps and the variation if you can see uh, the, there can be various uh, waveforms in which current can vary between the low level and a high level. high level current, this high level current is called peak current and the low level current is called base current or background current. This is base current or background current purpose of uh, uh, the peak current is to make sure that uh, the sufficient heat is generated during the welding. So, peak current 
develops lot of heat which is mainly used for melting of fraying surfaces. While the base current will be developing the less heat and during this uh, uh, low temperature uh, will be leading to the solidification of the weld metal. Uh, how much uh, uh, melting will be taking place and how long solidification will be taking place and uh, uh, the period during which melting will be occurring that will be governed by the duration, the duration of this peak current and the duration of the base current, uh, base current. So, the period during which current is high this is called pulse period and the pulse period will decide how long the heat will be high generated for the melting purpose and, uh, the, and, the, uh, and the duration during which the duration of uh, the base current uh, will, uh, will provide the opportunity for the solidification of the weld metal. So, this is called pulse period. Uh, the during which the high current is generated and it is indicated by uh, I B for the base current and I P for peak current. So, if the duration of the pulse period is more, more and more heat will be generated and the wider weld pool uh, will be made in and uh, on the other hand if the base current is for the larger duration then the cooling time will be more and uh, the less heat will be generated during the welding. So, this is how the temperature uh, welding current is varied during the uh, uh, pulse welding, pulse stick welding process. However, there can be various trends of uh, various kind of uh, uh, the variation in the current during the welding. So, uh, depending upon the rate of rise in the current. There can be different slopes here, this is a square waveform, there can be a triangular waveform or some other waveforms can be there depending upon the way by which the current increases from the base current to the peak current level. So, this is what uh, we have seen high level peak current is mainly used for melting of the fing surfaces and the low uh, level current that is called base current. Uh, is uh, it performs the two functions one it helps to maintain the arc during uh, the welding with very low heat and uh, during this period the solidification of the weld metal takes place so these are uh, this is uh, what the uh, schematic diagram showing the way by which pulsing uh, takes place so uh, uh, this is square waveform this shows that uh, the ib is the base current and the ip is the peak current uh, that is this and uh, depending upon the duration for which uh, the peak current is maintained, we call it Tp, the pulse duration and the duration for which uh, the base current is maintained is called a Tb and uh, uh, the total cycle uh, of the va variation in the base current and peak current is, is will be the t uh, uh, sum of the Tp plus Tb and uh, to sum up this uh, uh, because the current is varying from the Ip to Ib and the for it varies for the different durations and the these ip and ib are for the different durations so it becomes important to find out the average current corresponding to which heat will be uh, generated and that can be used for uh, uh, calculation of the heat generation during the pulse uh, tig welding process so what level of the peak current we should select in the main purpose of the peak current is to make sure that sufficient heat is generated so that melting can take place. So, if the thickness of the base material is high, we requ will require higher uh, peak current. Similarly, high thermal conductivity metals also will require higher peak current so that high enough heat can be generated to ensure that melting of the base material takes place. On the other hand, the lower uh, current or the background current. Uh, selection depends upon the electrode size, electrode uh, composition and its size. The, the electrodes uh, uh, like the thorium, 
coated electrode or zirconium coated electrode, they can work even with the low level of current, while uh, the pure tungsten electrodes will require the higher base current. Similarly, the electrodes of the size and the shape of the tip, the electrode uh, of the larger size will require the higher base current than the uh, fine or smaller dia electrodes. Similarly, uh, the sharp tipped electrodes will require the lower uh, can work with the lower base current than the uh, large dia or the large tipped uh, uh, large sized uh, uh, tipped electrodes. Uh, similarly, the weld metal solidification we want or the cooling rate that we want. Sometimes too high cooling rate because of uh, the excessive uh, the base current period um, the cooling rate uh, uh, becomes high and because of the high cooling rate. Uh, the gas entrapment takes place which in turn leads to the development of the porosity. So, that in which way we want to have the solidification of the weld metal that uh, decides the base current value. Uh, however, uh, the, the some ratio between the peak current and the base current is always maintained. The duration of the peak current and the base current determines the pulse frequency. Um, in general, the peak current duration is uh, uh, greater than the base current, but some ratio uh, between the peak current and the base current uh, 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 must be maintained. The frequency of the pulse is set as per the requirement of the heat input. If we require more heat, then the high frequency pulse is selected and if we require less heat, then the few pulses of the peak current will be there that will help in having the lower heat input. Similarly, the degree of the weld pool control is required. So, if we want to have the better control over the weld pool like in odd position welding, vertical and horizontal welding positions, if we want to have the very low heat input uh, so that the better control over the weld pool can be obtained, then under those conditions the low frequency, uh, the power low frequency, the welding current uh, is used for uh, the pulse stick welding. So, the very low uh, frequency the pulses are used uh, where lower heat input and the better control over the weld pool is required. In general, the background current usually varies from the 10 to 25 percent of the peak current in range of 40 to the 100 ampere. Further, it will depend upon the thickness of the base metal to be welded. So, some ratio is maintained between the base current and the peak current in such a way that the, uh, the arc is uh, made uh, stable enough and the lower heat is also uh, generated, so that uh, the uh, solidification of the weld metal can take place during this period. And the peak current is generally set at 150 ampere, 150 to the 100 uh, per 200 percent uh, of the steady current corresponding to the conventional uh, TIG uh, process for the same base material. So, the peak current is normally uh, 1.5 to 2 times of the current which is normally used by the conventional arc welding process for welding of the same metal. So, that uh, the higher uh, pulses of the high current can be provided to make sure that very quick melting takes place with the deeper penetration at the same time uh, followed by the high solidification rate uh, during the base current period. So, this kind of uh, the pulsing helps in refining the grain structure and improving the properties of the weld joint. The selection of the peak current duration depends upon the size of the pool, which size of the pool we want. Normally, uh, large size pools require uh, the greater peak uh, current. So, increase in peak current duration in general increases the weld pool size and the kind of penetration that we want. So, the higher peak current duration greater will the penetration. So, the, the peak uh, weld pool size requirement and the penetration requirement uh, uh, govern the pulse current and the duration. Further, background current duration determines the rate of the solidification. If the bank ground current is very long, then the solidification rate will be very high and under those conditions there will be possibility to have although very refined structure, but uh, the gas entrapment possibilities uh, will also be high that will in turn leading to the gaseous defects like the porosities. The pulse current is decreased for reducing the penetration. So, if our purpose is to have the lower penetration, the mainly low uh, lower pulse current means the peak current value is decreased. 
and the pulse current duration is decreased for reducing the weld pool size. So, there are two uh, aspects uh, like uh, which uh, will be affect uh, like the pulse current will be affecting uh, the penetration and the weld pool size. So, the value of the pulse current uh, that is the peak current uh, will be determining the penetration and its value is decreased for reducing the penetration. On the other hand, the pulse current duration is decreased for reducing the pool size. If the pulse current is for the longer duration, obviously it will be generating more heat and in turn it will be increasing the weld pool size. So, therefore, for reducing the weld pool size, the pulse current duration is uh, decreased. So, what is the role of the current pulsation? If we try to sum up, the pulsation of the welding current facilitates uh, the welding of the thin sheets using very low heat input. We know that the high heat is, is generated only for a low duration, very for short duration and then weld pool solidification is facilitated during the base current period. So, if the cycle of the peak current and the base current continues, then using very less uh, heat input, we can successfully weld uh, the thin sheets without melt through problem. And uh, therefore, the pulsation of the welding current facilitates the welding of uh, the thin sheets uh, because of the low, very low heat input uh, capabilities and therefore, it uh, helps in avoiding and this particular feature of ability to provide the low heat input helps in uh, avoiding the undesirable effects related with the high heat input which is normally associated with the conventional TIG welding. In this process, the constant value of the current is continuously supplied that in turn leads to the high heat input to the base material, especially in case of the thin sheets. So, high heat input um, during the welding of the thin sheets causes the problem of the melt through and the distortion and the fit up problems and the wider heat affected zone. We know that uh, if the excessive heat is uh, supplied, then the thin sheets will be melting immediately and whatever molten metal is generated that will be falling down during the welding. So, that uh, melt through will be leading to the defect in the plates being welded. Similarly, high heat generation will be causing the differential expansion and contraction in the plates being welded and uh, due to the poor rigidity and the stiffness of the thin plates, uh, they will ha have tendency to get wrapped and distort in the different ways. And similarly, there will be problem of the fit up and so the difficult, it will be difficult to control the tolerance and the heat affected zone will also be wider because of the excessive uh, localization of the heat up to the greater distance in case of the thin sheets uh, will be leading to the, uh, will be leading to the uh, development of the wider heat affected zone. So, under what conditions the pulse stick welding we can use and what uh, kind of uh, uh, the spots or the how the heat is generated when the pulsing is done. In pulse stick process, the weld, when weld bead is made, you will see that uh, the bead is composed of a series of overlapping weld spots uh, and when welding is done with very low frequency, these effects can be very clearly seen using this diagram. If we see that uh, the if the peak current is uh, coming up into the picture after a certain interval of time, we using especially when you we are working with very low pulse frequency, then the peak current is there at a definite interval of time and will we'll be able to see that the, uh, the heat is being generated, uh, heat generated is developing the spots like this. This is a situation when very low uh, pulse frequency is used. If we increase the pulse frequency, then the heat generated will be developing the, uh, uh, the uh, weld pool and these weld pools uh, being made will be overlapping to each other. And if we further increase the pulse frequency, then this percentage of the overlap will keep on increasing and we will be able to see that the continuous weld pool uh, is being found with some degree of the overlap. So, if uh, the pulse frequency is increased, uh, the, the, uh, the peak current will be generated at very short intervals and will be developing the weld pool uh, and uh, making uh, it possible to solidify quickly at very short interval of the times. So, uh, with the increase in pulse frequency, we can see that uh, the time after which heat uh, is generated 
uh, and the uh, lot of heat is generated that is reduced and we will be getting the continuous um, almost uh, uh, the, the very fine uh, uh, the uh, with great overlapping of the of these uh, the molten weld areas with each other. So, increasing the pulse frequency well obviously, will be increasing the heat input to the base material, but um, uh, the, and further their overlapping will also be increasing. It has been observed that when we work with the low pulse frequencies, the effect of the, uh, the pulse stick welding is found more on the structure and on the mechanical properties as compared to the situation where high pulse frequency is used. Because when you work with the high frequency, uh, high pulse frequency and that situation, we will see that the, the pulsing uh, takes place very frequently for long, uh, very frequently and uh, the we get almost uh, just like the weld uh, being developed using the conventional welding without pulsing. Because in conventional welding also, uh, the current is pulsed uh, <coughs> at the rate of say 50 hertz or the 60 hertz where cu current uh, magnitude will be varying in sinusoidal manner and will be passing through the 0 and the maximum uh, values. So, uh, uh, the pulse frequencies up to the 10 um, uh, gives uh, the much better results uh, as compared to the higher pulse uh, frequency. So, uh, if you want to see, we have seen that uh, in the pulse stick welding, the current varies between the peak current and the base current and uh, the duration for which uh, the peak current remains is, is designated as T p and uh, the duration for which base current remains is termed as T b. So, if you want to average out that is under what current actually the pulse stick welding works in for determining the heat input uh, uh, during the welding, we need to find out the average current value. Uh, under the pulsing conditions where pulse current is varying between the base current and the peak current for the different uh, durations. So, to find out that uh, we can use this formula where the I p into the T b plus I b into the T b. Uh, so, we, we, we can recall it again the I m that is the mean current is equal to the I p into the T p that is the peak current into the uh, uh, the, the, the peak current duration, peak current and the peak current duration that is the pulse duration uh, plus uh, the I b base current into the, the base current duration uh, divided by T p plus the T b. This is the total uh, cycle time which combines the pulse current and the base current duration. So, here we can see that I p is the peak current in amperes, the T p is the peak current uh, duration. Uh, in milliseconds and uh, uh, I b is the background current uh, ampere and uh, the T b is the background uh, duration milliseconds and here mean current and that is the average current in ampere. So, this equation can be used for determining the average current so as to calculate the heat being generated during the welding when the current is pulsing between the base current and the peak current. So, uh, uh, to see that uh, if we are supplying the heat in interrupted manner, especially when the, there is a pulse current and uh, there is uh, not much heat is generated when uh, there is a base current. So, the, the low frequency um, helps in uh, uh, helps in um, affecting uh, the require uh, re affecting the desired microstructure and uh, the kind of uh, the soundness of the weld joint which is formed in. Uh, so, the low uh, as I said the low pulse frequency will be developing the heat uh, uh, very uh, l less and uh, during the welding because the peak current will be there for the shorter duration and uh, the base current will be there for longer duration. So, but the too low pulse frequency means very less heat input and very high heat very high cooling rate will be experienced by the weld metal during the welding which in turn will increase the tendency of the porosity formation and the due to the rapid solidification caused by the long background current duration and the less heat input under the conditions of very low pulse frequency leads to have the inadequate opportunity for the gases to escape uh, from the weld pool and this in turn leads to the development of uh, and the gaseous defects in the weld metal. Further, uh, the low pulse frequency also affects the structure and the mechanical properties of the weld joint.
like a very fine grain structure can be achieved in both the cases when the low pulse frequency or very excessively high pulse frequency is used for the better mechanical properties. The pulse frequency has marked effect on the mechanical properties and the structure especially when the pulse frequency is below 10. Now, we will see that the another variant of uh, the tungsten inert gas welding process where the uh, preheated the filler wire is fed in the arc region. So, that the melting can be achieved at a higher rate and the weld can be made at the higher speed and for this purpose one uh, variant of the tungsten inert gas welding process or the GTA process uh, is uh, the hot wire tungsten arc welding process has been developed. In this process, this, base pro this process is based on very simple principle where very preheated filler metal is uh, fed into the arc zone and during the welding. So, this uh, preheated filler metal helps to reduce the heat required for the melting of the filler material one and uh, another is that it increases the rate of deposition. So, increased deposition rate helps in increasing the speed of the welding. This preheating of the filler wire can be achieved by any suitable means. This can be the electrical resistance heating or any external heating method can be used for this purpose. However, for the uh, for this uh, preheating of the filler wire electrical resistance heating by supplying the AC is commonly used because when DC is used sometimes it causes the problem of the arc blow. So, if we compare the kind of deposition rate which can be observed by the hot wired GTAW process and the conventional GTAW process then uh, under identical uh, the welding arc conditions for the given arc we can achieve the much higher deposition rate by the hot wire GTAW process and this uh, becomes possible because uh, the lot of heat required for melting of the filler material is uh, reduced when uh, the hot wire GTAW process is used because preheated wire requires the very less amount of the heat from the arc uh, which is being uh, generated during the welding and uh, because of this uh, the melting rate of the filler wire uh, becomes much greater than that of uh, the conventional GTAW process and uh, the higher deposition higher melting rate of the filler wire facilitates in uh, having the higher deposition rate by the hot wire GTAW process as compared to the conventional um, TIG welding process under the identical uh, the arc power conditions. In general if you can see that with the increase of the arc power helps in increasing the deposition rate, but the increase in uh, uh, arc power. Um, uh, causes significant increase in uh, the deposition rate especially when we are using the hot wire GTAW process. So, this is a schematic diagram showing, uh, showing that here the tungsten electrode and the tungsten electrode is connected to the power supply and uh, uh, the, there is a arc and in the arc gap the hot uh, wire preheated wire is fed into the arc zone for uh, the melting purpose. So, the preheating of the filler wire uh, uh, is done through the electrical resistance heating and for this purpose AC is normally preferred. So, the current is supplied to the filler wire so that by electrical resistance heating it is preheated and then it is fed into the arc region so that it can uh, be brought to the molten state and can be applied where it is desired. This is how it helps in having the higher deposition rate during the welding and achieve the higher welding speed. For the preheating purpose AC is preferred over the DC for the preheating of the filler wire so as to avoid the any tendency of the arc blow. This process is commonly used for the welding of the ferrous metals and the nickel alloys. The welding of the aluminum and copper is found to be the difficult by the hot wire GTAW process because it requires a lot of uh, uh, current uh, for uh, the heating by the electrical resistance heating principle. So, this is uh, the last portion of the GTAW process where we have seen the, the two variants of uh, the GTAW process. One was uh, the pulse GTAW where current is pulsed between the background current, the peak current level and uh, the, uh, the second one was the hot wire uh, GTAW process which is especially used for the high deposition rate purposes. So, in this presentation we have talked about the factors that govern the flow rate required for uh, uh, having the effective uh, shielding using the inert gas uh, and uh, the how can we compare the argon and helium 
uh, in terms of their characteristics for the effective shielding purpose. And we have also seen that how can we initiate the welding arc in the GTAW process apart from these two variants of the GTAW process. In coming lecture, we will be talking about the plasma arc welding process and the submerged arc welding process. So, this is how I conclude this uh, presentation. Thank you for your attention.